You guys ever notice when there's like something on Twitter or like a Pinterest, there's like a really cool poster and the actual photos just have this really cool, just, I don't know what you call it, like illustrated style. Basically just looks like they did some really cool highlights and shadows today. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. We're gonna take a photo from this to this and give you guys the exact settings on how you can accomplish a similar look and even take it even further if you guys want to. So let's hop into it. Also, shout out Ben Q, sponsor today's video. More info on that later though. Do not forget about the Everything Pack, the first link in the description, the product where you basically get all of my 32 products for one purchase and then every other product that I come out with for free via Selfie. You should know about it. So let's go ahead and get started. So of course, this is the after. We're not here yet. This is this is where we're actually starting. So the first thing I'm gonna approach and do is I'm gonna advise you guys to right click and convert this into a smart object. What I mean by that is if it's already a smart object, good. If it's currently a rasterized layer, I would make it into a smart object so you can fix the next thing that we're gonna be doing, which is going into filter, then choosing camera raw filter while we're selected on our photo layer and adding in our first color correction. What I like to do is I'd like to click this little button down here for the before and after just like so. And now the only thing I'm gonna really touch on the light for the record is for the premise of this actual video itself, this is more or less painting in your highlights and shadows. So I would highly advise you not to go really deep or really high with your highlights because you're gonna really ruin the attempt and you're gonna kind of put your exposure too high for highlights. You might put your shadows too low and it just might look really bad. So do not go below negative eight for shadows. Do not go above three for highlights. But if you put, put it a little bit, that way you get a, a little more of a clear distance or distinctive difference between your highlights and shadows and you're good to go for your light. What we're gonna do next is gonna do a little bit of texture. If you're a big fan of like that sport, gritty, grungy look, you can put your texture all the way to plus 100%, or you could be a semi-normal person and go like the 40 range. I feel like that's pretty good. And I'm gonna use my uh, clarity as well and put this up just a little bit, not too much. If you're a fan of clarity, become a fan of texture. And I think your designs instantly get just a tiny bit better. Maybe that's just personal preference. The last thing I wanna to touch in here is the detail, which is we're gonna actually zoom in really, really close. And we're gonna mess with the sharpening. So I bring this up all the way on 100% for a reason. Once you start seeing this pattern, which is like this artifacting pattern, that's when you know it's bad. So you basically wanna kind of zoom in and kind of say to yourself, when does it not become as noticeable? And I would say like right around here, that looks really good. And just that little bit of clarity, that little bit of sharpening and your lights, you press okay. And you instantly already get a better photo that just looks a lot more cleaner and it's gonna be more fun to work with. Now that we have this, we can start off with the next thing, which I really wanna quickly do is if you have your smart object layer, you can double click on this little page. This will bring into your rasterized version of the layer, meaning before you made it a smart object, it gives you a nice little pop-up in a new document. So you can mess around with it here and it'll update in your previous your other document, okay? All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press J on my keyboard. And if you don't have the patch tool as your highlight, immediate highlight, click on the patch tool, just like so. Now it's gonna basically go around anywhere that has any random blemishes and things that you obviously don't want. So all you really have to do is highlight around it, move it to a clear place and you're good. And then Photoshop does the rest, okay? We are good with that. We can save it in this document, just like so. You see it's saving. And when I close it down, it'll update in this document. If I just go control alt Z, you can see the before, after, just a quick little fix. You don't have to go too crazy. You can do a, you can do a bunch of skin retouching. I don't do that personally. Next thing we're gonna do is the first actual adjustment. So if I go to our adjustments down here and we're gonna go to where it says exposure. And for this, we're gonna make sure we clip mask the exposure to the actual photo below it. And for this first one, we're gonna basically put it at negative one. Now the thing is, if once you click on the actual adjustments, your color's not gonna change. But once you select on the actual thumbnail, the colors will change. When the colors do change, press Alt backspace to quick fill in black. Black means it's off. White means it's on. So to activate it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press your brush, make it nice and big. I'm gonna hold Alt just like so, move it left and right, excuse me, up and down for your harness, left and right for your diameter. Once you have this, I'm gonna change my color to white. And what you'll notice if I just select over, it'll basically paint in white. Now this is way too harsh, obviously. So we're gonna take our brush, take our opacity and lower this down to like, honestly, like 8%. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use white to paint in where the shadows we believe the shadow should go. Now, since we're at 8%, you can't really notice a lot, but the more you click, of course, in the same spot, the more that opacity kind of shows, just like so. So once his face is all good, I'm gonna go down to his shirt as well. While you're looking at me doing this, you might not even notice how much we've done, but if I kind of turn this on and off, we've actually done quite a lot. This is why it's pretty powerful. So once we've done that, we go down to the exposure. One more time, we're gonna add exposure again, clip mask it as well. Click on the properties and we're gonna use 
0.45, press enter, and this is gonna be the highlights. Now, if 0.45 is too high, let's say in your highlights, it's just like very, very, very bright. I might even say 39 or so. So mess around with that, right? But you, you wanna make sure it's obviously that you're, you're increasing it, but don't go too high where it's washing out the photo. I might even say 34. And once you've done that, turn off the exposure layer, take your brush, make it white, and now we're only painting around the highlight area. But anywhere where you kind of have a highlight, we're just gonna basically add in a few clicks in the brush stroke and hopefully it to a place where we like it. So I'm even gonna go around the eyes as well. And really quickly, Jay, if you kind of zoom in to the actual layer mask here, you can kind of start to see your layer mask should basically kind of resemble that person or object that you're doing this effect to. Now, of course, you can always go back and say, if you want it to be more vibrant, you can increase that exposure. I think 39 might actually be okay. Now, wait a second, so I can show you guys my main monitor of like seven years. This guy. So BenQ has sponsored me once again after seven years. I, I love them. With their brand new 4K, always accurate, consistent color PD3225U monitor. I always personally get asked what monitor I use for my setup. And honestly, it's always, and I genuinely mean this, always has been this monitor. I just always upgraded the actual model while it just came out. And my wife also has the other monitor, so it's still in the family. The monitor itself is 32 inches with Thunderbolt 3 compatibility. It's 16 by 9 UHD LG IPS black panel with like 2000 to 1 contrast ratio. It basically means deeper blacks. I love that. And I am one of these guys. When I'm, when I'm designing, I'm doing this. 24 seven, and it doesn't have any glare, anti-glare, and it's matte screen. It's honestly just, it's beautiful. Now, if I can just say the coolest part, okay? Just for, let me actually show you right now. So I do actually work on a laptop, my far left, if it's I'm rendering or I just wanna do something else, or I just wanna have my travel laptop ready to go. This laptop, as you can see, is connected to this monitor, then which I press this over here on their BenQ's control block. They call it like a puck. I press this button right here. My monitor will then go from, which my connected to my PC, to then connect to my uh, Mac, just like that. Is that, that's sick. So what that does mean is you can connect your M1, M2, or Mac Studio to this monitor while you're also still connected to your PC, and then have a KVM switch ready to go. That's sick. Thank you, BenQ, for basically coming and clutching my entire professional life as a designer. And just, yeah, I, I just love this thing. And I think you guys will too. So don't forget to check in the description down below to check them out. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. So next thing is actually their eyes. So if you guys don't know, the more animated the eyes look, the more just like attractive or more attentive the person is. So the way you actually make things more animated is you basically go to Illustrator 101 where they kind of white out the eyes. So we're gonna do that same exact thing here by using actually a uh, hue and saturation. Click mask this on the hue and saturation, go back to our properties, right? And then what we're gonna set this up is gonna take your saturation, lower this down, not where it's black and white. That's not natural. You wanna of course still have that redness, that's aliveness, that's the blood, right? You know, in their face and whatnot. And I would say about negative 22 feels pretty good for me personally, where it doesn't feel like they're like dead eyes. Then take your lightness and then bring this up, let's say to like anywhere above five might be a decent route for me. So plus 13 feels good for me. Alt backspace, or at my, since my colors are flipped, you see alt backspace didn't work. That means control backspace, turn off the hue and saturation layer, use our white brush and put our opacity back up though. It's maybe like, 70 or so percent. And now we're just gonna click around their whiteness of their eyes and just kind of give it that look that we just did on our hue and saturation. So I'm gonna do on that eye, same thing with this eye. It's also really good for if their eyes are like yellowish. I kind of press on and off. You can see very clearly how good they look, but I even might say a lightness can go up just even a tiny bit more. You don't want it like this high. That's crazy. This is like thumbnail level. We're not looking for like that much animation. We're looking for like a good natural 27. Feels pretty decent to me. All right, we're gonna do a brightness and contrast. For this, we're gonna basically lower this uh, contrast, up the brightness, control backspace or alt backspace, whichever one that turns it off. Use our white brush and basically only want to highlight their actual eye. And this itself as well really helps the eye stand out. The next thing is actually selective color. And you're just sometimes, you select the color, right click, click mask this, go to properties. And what this basically is, if you're familiar with like color mixture, right? That's in camera raw filter, messing around with the hue, saturation and adjustments of like specific colors, similar. But I feel like when you mess around with red, since reds kind of determines people's, you know, you either have a red hue or a green hue or whatnot, he definitely has a very undertone red hue in his face. That's why I'm gonna choose red here. If they have an undertone yellow, choose yellow. If they have an undertone blue, 
use blue. It depends on the photo, it depends on the person and the skin tone, right? We're gonna go over here and now when we start messing with, with this, the objective that I'm personally looking for in this specific idea is just to make it feel a little bit more red, okay? More alive in some aspects. I'm gonna, this is like sickening, right? We're gonna make sure it feels a little more like lively. So not too crazy in the adjustments. Hopefully you guys can see when I'm going back and forth, what's happening. If you guys can't, change your monitors, right? I'm just saying, shout out BenQ, because I just know the color accuracy is there. Just, just saying. Next thing I wanna do really quickly, after selective color, will just be basically a quick little LUT. Now, what I mean by that is if you guys go over here to the adjustments layer and use color lookup, this is basically the equivalent to like editors LUTs for their camera filter camera footage. Click this little drop down and all these presets are a pretty fun thing to go through. Now it depends on the look that you're looking for. If you're looking for more red, well look at this. This looks really good. Honestly, if you're looking for like a really red tone look, uh, I'm gonna keep just scrolling down my, my arrow keys and kind of see all these different effects. This is a little more neutral, I would say. Right, if I can just keep going down, keep going down. This is a really cool setup as well if you like more contrast and like heaviness. Let's say if you like the, the contrast here, what you can also do is change your blend mode from normal to lighter color. And this will only really target the lighter color area. So you can see his face does get targeted and gives that really cool color correction. Again, a lot more easier to work with than trying to actually manage a color correction yourself. This is not the last, last thing. The very last thing, we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna use a basically a 50% gray. 50% gray is 808080. And then because of that, we're gonna press Alt Backspace on this layer to quick fill in our nice 50% gray. Clip mask it. And the objective for this is actually gonna be on overlay. You guys, hopefully might know what's coming next. We're gonna be using the burn and dodge tool. So obviously burn will target the shadows, dodge, right, will target the highlights because that's kind of what they do target as a tool itself. It's your first time understanding those things. We're gonna take our, your opacity basically, but your exposure is the word we're gonna use for this because that's what it is. We're gonna press 9%. This is basically, again, the opacity of the brush per se. I'm gonna lower that pretty low. Don't forget that this is very permanent. Unless you can use a layer mask, I never did it. If you could, cool, let me know in the comments just how to actually do that. If not, just know that what you're doing right now that I'm doing is very permanent. So go slow. First thing I'm gonna be doing is the burn tool. I'm gonna basically go around the areas of the shadows and just click a few times, okay? I think down here that jawline is always preferable. It just makes it look a lot more cut. Okay, same thing with the actual shirt itself. So I'm gonna make these folds look really, really good by just clicking that dodge tool very heavily. Once you're good with your actual burn tool, we're gonna use the dodge tool to do the same exact thing. Don't forget to rechange the uh, exposure. It does change. I'm gonna use 6%, which is lower because I do think highlights is a lot easier to mess up. What this dodge tool around with the highlights are, and just giving myself a nice look. But for me, I think this looks pretty good when I keep going in here. I'm gonna go into these folds as well. So right here looks really awkward, right? I don't love it. Now, if that happens, what I would recommend is using the sponge tool here. It's almost like you have to like imaginary, like you're like using a warp tool. Maybe it'll help it get rid of it, just soften a little bit more, right? So you can kind of see what's happening. And honestly, with that, I think we're done. And you can see the entire thing did change, but it looks really good. I think it's one of those things, if you enjoy that style, that kind of painterly-esque style, I think it's super fun to do. And you can see the before and after again, it really does show. And the more effort you put into it, you can take this as a first pass and then go again with all these different settings and just say, let me just start getting really detailed, really meticulous. There's some people out there who paint like over like 10 different times. This strategy itself though, that we portrayed in this entire like set of options is basically the overall idea and how you can approach it and make your own really cool style of like this really painterly esque poster-esque detailed beauty period. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, do not forget, check out BenQ in the description down below. This is my main monitor for the last like seven years. I've had actually the same exact model. I just upgraded three times. That is no joke. So I just want to say, if you guys really do appreciate the idea of having a really good monitor, this is definitely one for you, especially if you're a person like me who works on a Mac at the same time in specific areas and you want like a KVM switch, super sick. So with that being said though, thank you guys so very much for watching. Seso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking proper guys that are much love peace and enjoy your day and hopefully you come out with like a really cool poster style and i see some really cool photos color corrections out there all right later